boys and girls on fire. I missed you all and I'm happy to be here today. Can you remember what we learned last week Sunday? I can't hear you. Yes, the triumphant entry. Can you remember the people of Jerusalem? The way they praised the king of kings and they used their palms and they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. Can you remember? But do you know it didn't last for long? The same week, some of them were shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Why? But as girls and boys on fire, we have to allow Jesus be the king of our lives. What did I say? As boys and girls on fire, we have to make up our mind to make Jesus the king of our lives. And we have to give him all our lives and love him forever. We shouldn't be like people that were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. That is not right. So are we ready to praise God? Are we ready to praise God? Are we ready to praise God, boys and girls on fire? Okay, now let's praise Jesus together. I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love here in your love no place I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love here in your love set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Set a fire down in my soul That I can't contain and I can't control I want more of you, God I want more
morning, I brought my family photo album. I love looking at this album because it reminds me of beautiful memories I created with my family and friends. So this morning, I would love to share some of these beautiful memories with you. The first picture is a picture of me and my family and my mother's 60th birthday party. See my beautiful sisters and brothers. I enjoyed myself so much on this day and I, whenever I remember this day, oh, my heart leaps for joy. The next picture is a picture of my beautiful mother when she was a young lady and the second one is a picture she took at a wedding party a few weeks ago. The next picture, woo! See this cute baby. Can you guess who this is? I bet you can't. This is Mrs. Olayade, me. All right, the next picture. Oh, can you guess who this is now? Yes, you got it. This is Mrs. Olayade when she was five years old. Looking at these pictures sure helps to bring back beautiful memories I had years and few weeks ago. Now, when Jesus went back to heaven to be with his father, he left us something to remember him by. It's not particularly a photo album where we can flip through pictures or what, when we can look at what it looks like. He left us something to remind us of what he did for us at the cross of Calvary. It's called the Holy Communion. Do you know what these are? This and this. If you don't know, don't worry. During the Bible lesson, you will learn more about this. They represent the Holy Communion, which is the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus. So who is eager and excited to learn about the Lord's Supper? But before we learn about the Lord's Supper, who can remember last week's memory verse? Do you? Let's take it together. <music> Children, it's good to be back with you this week. I hope you've been learning your memory verse. This time, I want to see how far you've gone with it. So we are going to do the John 3.16 again. Are you ready? I can tell you. Are you ready? Okay. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. So now we'll go. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So we're going to take it again one more time. Are you good? Okay. John 3 says then, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So let's take it just a bit fast this time around. Are you good? All right. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. I want you to do me a favor. Keep practicing until I see you next week. Thank you. Bible reading time. I hope you are ready and you have your Bibles with you. Our Bible reading today is going to be from the book of Luke chapter 22 from verse 7 to 23. I'll take that again. Luke chapter 22 from verse 7 to 23. Luke is the third book in the New Testament. You can ask mommy or daddy to help you if you cannot find it. So our friend is going to be reading for us today and I want you to read along and make sure you're paying attention, okay? Thank you. Luke chapter 22, verse 7 to 23, The Last Supper. Then the day of our living bread came. That was the time the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent 
Peter and John on ahead. Go, he told them. Prepare for us to eat the Passover meal. Where do you want us to prepare for it? They asked. Jesus replied, When you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house he enters. Then say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room? Where can I eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you a large upstairs room with furniture already in it. Prepare for us to eat there. Peter and John left. They found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles took their places at the table. He said to them, I really look forward to eating this Passover meal with you. I wanted to do this before I suffered. I tell you, I will not eat the Passover meal again until it is celebrated in God's kingdom. After Jesus took the cup, he gave, he gave thanks. He said, Take this cup and share it among yourselves. I tell you, I will not drink wine with you again until God's kingdom come. Then Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He handed it to them and said, This is my body. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do this in memory of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is poured out for you. But someone here is going to hand me over to my enemies. His hand is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go to his death, just as God has already decided. But how terrible it will be for the one who hands him over. The apostles began to ask one another about this. They wondered which one of them would do it. Hello children, I hope you enjoyed and had an exciting time with the Bible reading. Okay, it's time for Bible discussion. And as we said earlier, Jesus knew his time was near and he wanted to leave his disciples with an experience that will always remind them of him. Can we all watch a video that will explain to us about the Lord's Supper and we will then talk about it afterwards. The story of Easter, the Last Supper. This is Jesus. Hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms. <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, uh, hi. The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. They sat down to eat and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. 
and he said to his disciples, This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, One of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, You have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang a song to God together. enjoy the video. So I'm going to explain what the Lord's Supper is. Jesus broke bread and he served wine to the disciples. This served as a representation of his body and his blood. So the bread served as a representation of Jesus' body, while the wine served as a representation of Jesus' blood. This signifies that God, Jesus gave himself so that we may be partakers of the new covenant sin and any other bad things in this world cannot keep us apart from God. Just like we look at pictures and it brings back memories of things that have passed, Jesus asks us to always take this meal in reference and as a reminder of what he did for us and our new status in God. That is why we take the communion. This is for a remembrance of what Jesus did for us. So when we take the communion, we should be grateful for all that Jesus did for us. He did a lot for us by dying on the cross of Calvary. And then there are so many benefits that comes with this. One, we have life without sin. We have forgiveness for our sin. We have good health. We have sound mind. And any other thing you can name, any good thing you can name. I want you to know then that you live by faith Absolutely trusting God to help you always become boys and girls on fire. Hello boys and girls. Hi. It's good to be with you this morning. Can you see my basket? So what do you think when you see this basket? Did somebody say picnic? Picnic! Yay! We're having a picnic! Can you grab your favorite blankets with you so you can come on this picnic experience with me? In my own basket, I have my wine, I have my bread, and I have cups. Do you have your favorite blankets now? Did you make us some snacks? Hey, Bouncy. I'm reading my favorite story in the Bible. It's when Jesus said goodbye to his disciples right before he was taken to the cross. That sounds like a sad story. Why do you like it so much? I guess it helps me feel connected to those 12 people who Jesus first chose to be his followers. Yeah, 
I've always wished I could be one of those guys. Well, this story tells about a way we can be just as close to Jesus as they were. It shows one thing we can do to be Jesus' disciples too. Really? But wait, Dot, what does that have to do with snacks? Just let me tell you the story, Bouncy. You'll see. Jesus knew it was almost time for him to die, but it was also time for a very special holiday. Like Easter? It was Easter time. It was a feast called the Passover that God's people had celebrated since Moses' time. Jesus wanted to share this meal with his 12 disciples. He planned to show them how to remember him after he was gone, using the wine and bread from the table. The snacks! Is that why you have grape juice and crackers? That's right, Bouncy. Jesus held up a cup, drank it, and said, This is my blood. It's poured out for you. Do this to remember me. He held up the bread, broke it, and took a bite. This is my body, broken for you. Do this to remember me. So all his disciples drank and ate. Um, Dot? Yes, Bouncy? This is a sad story. I don't understand why Jesus would want them to remember such a sad day. Jesus dying for us, giving up his body and his blood for us. That's not a memory I like thinking about. Why didn't Jesus tell them to remember the happy times? They did have lots of happy times. Walking together, telling stories, learning about God, miracles. But none of that matters if it wasn't for what Jesus did on the cross. His blood had to be poured out. His body had to be broken. It is sad in a way, but it's the most wonderful thing God could ever do for us. That brings it all back to us. We can do this to be just like Jesus and his disciples. It's called the Lord's Supper or communion. Dot, you know I'm gonna have to ask what communion means, right? Communion means to share something, to be close together, to be connected. You know, like in a community. When we take communion with grape juice and crackers, we're showing that we remember what Jesus did. Not by just thinking about how his blood was poured out and his body was broken on the cross, but living like that, doing what Jesus did, being broken and poured out too. Whoa, I don't want to die on a cross. Not die how he died, live how he lived. Show that you'll do whatever God says, just like Jesus did. That's how we can have communion with Jesus. That's why we do it. You know I want to live like Jesus. Can we take communion right now? It's really special. It's something your parents will want to be a part of. You should ask them first. Well, Dot, I'm glad we talked about this. I want to be Jesus' disciple, just like those guys in the Bible. Me too, Bouncy. Jesus wants all his followers to share communion with him and with friends like you. Now, do you have your wine and your bread? Let us take a communion together as we pray. Jesus, this is your body that was broken for us and your blood that was poured out for us. We now understand that every time we do this, it is in remembrance and honor of who you are to us. The sacrifice of the cross the beauty of your love, and how we always remain connected to you at all times. Thank you, Jesus. We do not take your love and the sacrifice you made for granted. We choose to stay committed to you forever, walking in faith and doing amazing things as boys and girls on fire. Amen. Amen. Jesus and the disciples eat the last supper. Open. Yes, sir. Question number two. During communion, what do we remember when we eat the bread? The body of Christ. Yes, correct. 
question number three. During communion, what do we remember when taking the wine? The blood of Jesus! Yes! You're correct! Question number four. Why do we take the communion? So we need to remember what Christ did for us. Also make us conscious of what our covenant with God is and what this covenant holds for us. Wow! Great job, everybody. I'm sure you all had an awesome time together today. Yes, we did. Now remember, stay connected to God and be conscious of Him.